It's official, the Huawei P50 Pocket is coming to the Philippines on Feb 4, but I've gotten a chance to use it for over a week now, and this beautiful phone brings some serious heat to possibly burn the competition. How's it going fam? Tita James here, and we're gonna be talking about this device right here. So this is Huawei's first foldable phone with a clamshell design, and it's a very beautiful and pretty badass phone, but that's not to say that there isn't any room for improvement. Now, before we go any further, as of recording this video, I don't have the price for the P50 Pocket just yet. It will be announced on Feb 4, but we do have the price in Malaysia, which is a pretty good indicator. And if you convert it, it's about 73,000 pesos. So what are we getting for that possible price tag? And is it worth it? Let's jump in. Now, in terms of design, I think this is gonna be a mixed bag for a lot of people. As you can see, we have the white one, and on their website, they say that they're using 3D sculpted micro glass for the material. So you will feel a bit of texture on the phone, but if you don't like it, no worries. You can slap on the included case, which is made out of plastic with chrome accent. Now you kind of lose the premium feel when it's on though. So I've personally been using it without the case. I put this in my pocket with car keys, which I don't really encourage, but there are no micro scratches that I've noticed. I haven't been able to do a drop test, which I really don't plan to do, so no accidental ones, so I can't speak of its durability in that regard. Now, there is no IP rating at all with this phone. That's something I wanna see in possibly the next version of this device if Huawei decides to continue with it. But what I can say though is that the hinge, it feels really good. So Huawei says that they use a multi-dimensional hinge system on the P50 Pocket that creates a water drop shaped cavity when folded for stowing parts of the screen. But hey, look, all I know is it's smooth and while I can't speak about its long-term durability for now, it does feel very sturdy. Plus, I'm not sure if you've noticed this, there's no gap which I and the members of the team really appreciate. I'm sure you have your comments about the front of the phone because the tech mob has had serious conversations about it. Yes, the exterior display kind of resembles a smartwatch that a lot of us were iffy about, but it really works for taking photos. Plus, it does cover all the basics. You can check your messages, have some control over your Spotify playlist, and check your calendar. Now, I'm curious to hear from you guys if you like the design or not, so let me know in the comment section. Plus, if you've seen the gold one, are you team gold or team white? For the ports, you have USB-C where you would typically find it on most phones alongside speaker grills. On the left, you have access to the SIM tray, dual slots, but no expandable storage. And lastly, on the right, you have the volume rocker and the fingerprint scanner slash power button. Now, I really appreciate the placement of this since the phone is pretty tall when unfolded and you don't have to do a lot of hand gymnastics to reach it. Plus, it's fast and accurate too. And we finally get to the inner display. And I should have filmed it because when I got this and unboxed it, it looked pretty seamless. Instead, I'll try to put up some photos I took, but they do have a disclaimer on the website that it might not be the case as you use this phone. And we are starting to see a bit of a crease, nothing major, and I guess that's understandable. I'm just hoping that it doesn't progress. The screen itself is really good though. Again, it's a tall one, 21 by nine aspect ratio, 6.9 inches, and they are using an OLED display at 120 Hertz with a 300 Hertz touch sampling rate. Now the vertical real estate is great for reading articles on the web or browsing through your feeds and even a bit more visibility to give your group chats some context. Now overall picture quality is great as well and checks all the boxes that you would typically expect from an OLED screen. So I had no complaints when I had my little video breaks in between tasks. Now you are also getting stereo speakers with the P50 Pocket. You saw the one on the bottom, but the other one is hidden up here on the earpiece. Now it sounds rather thin, which is understandable considering the form factor of the phone, but give a listen. I'm pretty sure you're asking by now, Tito James, when are you getting to those cameras? The answer is now. So the P50 Pocket has a 40 megapixel true chroma camera, just like the ones we found on the standard non-folding P50. And that's accompanied by a 13 megapixel ultra wide plus a 32 megapixel 
Ultra Spectrum Camera. So another question you might be asking is what the heck does an ultra spectrum camera do? Now, as far as I can tell, it enables a feature on the cameras called fluorescence mode. Now the team and I are now gonna call it CSI mode because it shines a black light that allows you to take photos like this one right here of this cursed Pikachu that's probably gonna give me nightmares. That's not to say that you can't get creative with it. It's a pretty cool feature to have. You're not gonna be using it all the time, but it's nice to have in your pocket. See what I did there? By the way, you do have a selfie camera in the inner display as well. It's at 10.7 megapixels, which is a really odd number for a megapixel count. But here are a couple of sample photos that are serviceable, but I didn't use it often because you really want to use those main cameras even for selfies. So here's a handful of shots that we took using the quote unquote rear cameras on the P50 Pocket and they look really good. True chroma or true to life colors is what Huawei is really pushing with the P50 series and I do appreciate that you are getting what you're actually seeing or at least very very close to it. So if you're looking for that big pop of color you're gonna have to use apps like Snapseed or Lightroom but the skin tones just like we saw on the P50 Pro look really good straight out of the gate here. You're also getting plenty of detail, so if you want to do a bit of toy photography with this, minus the creepy Pikachu that I showed you early on, you can definitely do that. Now, if you want to take snapshots of your food before you eat them, it'll show plenty of the finer details, like this shot of my Tapa Pandesal from La Luna Cafe. There is a gap between the quality of the main and ultra wide, of course, but the photos look good as a whole, so I really didn't mind. So you have really good cameras on the P50 Pocket, some of the best in its class. Now the reason why I'm encouraging you to use the main cameras even for selfies is because of that exterior display. It just makes it so easy to frame yourself. There's no guessing games like I had when I first used the Galaxy Z Flip 3. For night shots, you're getting really good photos as well. It is a Huawei phone after all, and they've been doing a really good job in low light. I also tried night mode with 5X zoom, and while it isn't the cleanest, you can still get details if you need to take a photo of a phone number for something and there isn't much light around. So there is use for it. For video, you can shoot up to 4K 60 and the footage looks pretty good. Great exposure and kind of stable if you aren't doing anything crazy. So we were able to shoot a short montage of a cafe that we went to, which by the way, you can check out on the wife's channel. So shameless plug here. Video at night still has the focus hunting pulsing issue that we typically see in most devices. So just make sure that you're getting the best lighting possible if you really need to take videos at night. Okay, so now let's move on to performance. And it's pretty much the same experience that I got with the P50 Pro. After all, you are getting the same setup here, Snapdragon 888, and the white one has eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage, while the premium gold version has 12 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. Really the biggest downside for me with the setup on the P50 Pro and Pocket is that the SD888 that's on them is the 4G version that might not be a deal breaker for you, but for me, I'm spoiled. There's good 5G connectivity where I live and the areas I move around. And I kind of expect flagship phones to have 5G connectivity at this point in the game. That being said though, no complaints about its general performance. It ran all the tasks I needed really smoothly, but it is more of a workhorse slash fashion accessory. So I didn't really run anything that would super tax the system. And I don't recommend gaming on the P50 Pocket because that's not what it's made for, but it can if you really wanted to. As for battery life, our benchmark test had this clock in at around nine hours, but then again, that required us to have the screen open all the time and the P50 Pocket isn't meant to be used like that. By the way, the capacity is at 4,000 milliamp hours. Now on the day that Leia and I were able to go out and take the P50 Pocket where we took photos, the videos that you saw earlier, I answered email and answered the messages from the team. That afternoon saw me drain the battery from 70 to 40%. So in theory, it should last you the whole day, but I don't know, if you're a power user, I don't think this is the right phone for you. Now the charging for the P50 Pocket is only 40 watts, but that shouldn't be a problem given the capacity, but I wish it had 
wireless charging. So maybe again, the next version Huawei. For software, I think we're pretty used to all the ups and downs of Harmony OS by now, but I was able to get all the apps I needed to get work done on the go using a combination of apps from the App Gallery, Petal Search, and G Space. Okay. Verdict time. Assuming that Huawei Philippines stays close to the pricing from Malaysia, should you consider the P50 Pocket? Like most foldables, this is not going to be for everyone. It is a really good first clamshell for Huawei though. And if you're looking for a device with this particular form factor with superior camera quality, I think this is your best choice from the bunch. It's gonna come at a pretty steep price though, unless Huawei Philippines can do some magic and lower the price for when they announce it on Feb 4. So there you go guys, that's pretty much it for the P50 Pocket. Do you agree with everything I said? It's okay to disagree. I completely understand. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think of this first foldable clamshell from Huawei. Is it good? Is it something you would consider? What would make you get this phone? And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, sub to the channel, and make sure you hit that notification bell. Of course, if you have any questions or you need something clarified, leave it down below, and I will try my best to get to them as soon as I can. For all the latest in tech, head to unbox.ph+. Follow us on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, listen to our podcast on Spotify. And yeah, that's pretty much it. My name is Tita James. Peace. God bless. See you guys next time. And of course, stay safe, guys.